Hey there, Facebook. Hey guys. How you doing? Okay, let me just make sure you can see me really quick. Looks like you can. All right. Kind of getting used until so you're getting used to this new setup. Okay, so today I'm excited because uh, I'm going to share with you something that I believe is actually one of the most important um, skills you need to have for for great soloing. Um, it is one of the most important skills, absolutely. And it's funny because I never hear anybody talking about it. Um, people talk about scales and um, runs and just learning licks and stuff, but I don't think people really think through the mechanics of great guitar solos very much. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. And uh, first, before, before we do anything else, go to uh, davidjelam.com forward slash melodic soloing, or you can just click on the link on this video, and it'll take you where you can download this page. This is going to help you a ton, and I'm going to explain how to use this, okay? But it's going to help you a ton. All right, so um, last week, my video on Thursday randomly got deleted, and so I'm actually going to uh, redo what I did last week because really nobody got to see it, and um, maybe just, you know, uh, uh, one or two people. But anyway, so um, I'm going to go over that, and I've actually updated this sheet so that it's way more valuable than it was last week. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so first, I'm going to go over a scale. All right, we're going to go over a scale. So you do need to know your scales. All right, that is important. Um, but you have to know how to use them. So that's what we're going to learn today. So first we're going to go over the scale, and then I'm going to um, actually have an audio track that I'm going to use that you can download also from my website. Whenever you download this PDF here, you will get, um, there's a link in the email that you'll get where you can actually download the audio track, the same audio track I'm using just to jam along to and practice to. Okay, so it's gonna be really, really useful to you. If you use this, I promise you'll get better at soloing. You absolutely will. Okay, um, so first we're gonna learn the scale. All right, um, so the scale I'm using is a G major pentatonic scale and we're going to learn an ascending form of it that's really really useful um, that you can use a lot and just makes um, it can make your movements a lot more fluid uh, so anyway so we're gonna start that so what you're gonna do and then again this is on the sheet uh, we're gonna start with your first finger on the third fret of the sixth string then we're going to go third finger on the fifth fret, same string, third finger on the seventh fret. Okay, so we're basically sliding up, we're going. All right. Then we're going to go, so that's three, five, seven. Then we're going to go to the um, uh, fifth string, fifth fret, seventh fret with the third finger. And we're going to go to the 4th string, 5th fret, 7th fret with the 3rd finger, and ninth fret, also with the 3rd finger. So, so far we've got... Okay, there's just two more strings. We're going to go to the 3rd string and play the 7th fret, then the ninth fret, and then finally, we're going to play the 8th fret on the 2nd string. And that'll be with your 2nd finger. You can also do it with your 1st finger. Either one would be fine. So, um, yeah. Okay, so one more time. I'm going to go over that. Uh, so it's going to be... Also, make sure that you're always using um, alternate picking. 
in your in your picking hand, whenever you play a scale, whenever you're practicing it, learning it, whatever, always use alternate picking because you always need to be um, practicing that skill and keeping it uh, keeping it going. So I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so click on the link and go download this PDF that we're going to go over, okay? So first, uh, first thing I want to point out after the scale is we're going to be playing a, um, a four chord progression, okay? This is just for demonstration purposes. We're in the key of G, all right? And the four chord progression we're going to use, let's see if I can get this, get this right, uh, I mean if I can you know, getting the camera right, but we're going to be playing E minor, C, G, and D, okay, and so you can see it here, so start with this progression, it's in the key of G, and it's going to be E minor for four beats, C for four beats, G for four beats, and D for four beats, okay. Now, um, the reason why this is so important is because, um, or, yeah, the reason why it's so important is because you need to know what chords, obviously, you're playing on top of. It may sound obvious, but you need to think about it more critically. The other thing is, we're going to learn the notes in the scale and then learn the notes in the chords and understand what's happening in the chords so that we can know how to, um, basically, how to add tasteful things to the chords and things that are going to sound good. Because not every note in the scale is always going to sound the greatest with whatever chord you're playing. All right, so you can see here at the top, I'm sorry, at the bottom of the scale, it shows you what note is in um, the, uh, the scale. It shows you all the notes. So it's going G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G. So it's a two octave scale of the G major pentatonic scales, two octaves, so it's just repeating, it's just doing the same thing twice. All right. So you need to memorize those notes. So what you should do is first, if you don't know the scale, memorize the scale. All right. Then, um, then you want to memorize the notes in the scale. So use the sheet, use the PDF download to and look at the notes as you're playing them and memorize which ones they are. This is also going to help you to memorize the fretboard better. So G A B C No. G A B D because we're playing pentatonic. E G A B D E G. Okay? So you want to memorize those notes. So say them out loud as you play them and even as you look at the fretboard. G, A, B. So you get more of a visual reference of what you're actually playing. D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G. Okay? Now, so, so do this. Do exactly as I'm saying because it's going to help you tremendously. If you, if you have trouble like creating solos or like you're not sure how to get started or you're not very confident with your soloing so you feel like it doesn't sound like it's supposed to or it's not as tasteful or melodic as you want it to be this is your ticket so you want to do everything in order first memorize the scale then you need to memorize the notes in the scale and actually look at the fretboard as you're saying the notes out loud to yourself so that you get a visual reference of where the notes are on the fretboard because that's really important you want to know the notes on the fretboard so you have better control of what you're playing. Okay? So, those are our first steps. The next thing we want to talk about is what's actually happening in the chords. Okay? So, again, the chord progression is E minor, C, G, D. Now, let's go back to the PDF that you can download. And you can see I've written here uh, what notes are in these chords. Now these chords are triads, which is just a fancy name for a three note chord, okay? Most chords you play are triads, like all any kind of chord that doesn't have a number next to it is basically going to be a triad. G, A, E, 
uh, A minor, um, you know, your minor chords, diminished chords, augmented chords, those are all triads, okay? Every major chord and every minor chord is a triad as long as it doesn't have a number next to it. Um, so it's just a three note chord. That's important. A lot of people don't realize that, that most chords are made of just three notes, okay? And here are the three notes in the chords. So E minor contains E, G, and B, all right? E, G, B. You want to memorize that. Obviously, you can't do it right this second, but you're going to download this and, uh, and play around with it and even come back to this video and um, and it's going to help you memorize these uh, these chords. So E minor is made up of E G B. The C chord is C E G. So when I play a C chord on the guitar, I'm playing some arrangement or some configuration of C E and G. So it's actually C E G C E. It's just the way it happens to be. But for sure, those three notes are going to be there in that chord. Okay. Next, we have the G chord, which is G, B, D. So again, when you play a G chord, you're playing these three notes. You didn't realize that, but you are. G, B, D. All right? Then the D chord is made of D, F sharp, and A. All right? Now, F sharp doesn't come out in our scale because we're playing a pentatonic scale, and F sharp happens to be the seventh of this scale, and it's not in the pentatonic. So... Um, anyway, so you, you can learn that later if you learn the regular major scale. Just uh, disregard what I said. <laughs> if it confuses you, if it's too much information, don't worry about it. Okay, so what we want to do next is, uh, again, memorize what's happening in the chord, and then um, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you how you can how you can solo over the chords and make it sound really nice, okay? So here's the, uh, let me pull up the audio I've got prepared. All right, so here's the audio. It's just a simple, really, really simple thing. The guitar is playing diamonds. It's just going through this progression. So we have E minor. Right. So what we want to learn how to do is how to use the scale to make some really nice sounding solos on top of the chords. And I'm going to give you something key, so really, really pay attention right now. Uh, if everything you, I've talked about so far, you're like, yeah, that's no big deal, easy, whatever. This is what I never hear talk, people talk about that's so important. Um, and whenever I teach it to my students, it makes a really big difference in their um, guitar soloing. All right. So when the chord changes, you want to land on one of the three notes in the chord. Okay. So like when it goes from E minor to C, when you get to the C chord, you want to land on either C. E or G. And actually C is not in our scale either because it's not in the pentatonic scale. C and F sharp are the two notes that are left out because uh, they're the four and the seven. So they're left out of the pentatonic scale. So and then when we go from C to G, we'll go G, B, we'll play either G, B, or D. All right? And then for the D chord, we could play either D, F sharp, or A, or in our case, we're just going to play D or A because that's all that we have in our scale. All right, so for example, I'm going to play the progression and just uh, call out some of the notes that I'm playing. All right, so remember again, E minor is E, G, B. Okay, so when I land on the E minor, I'm going to play one of those three notes. And then C is C, E, G. I'm going to play one of those three notes when I land on C. And same thing for the G, same thing for the D. All right, so here goes. Playing an E note right there. Here's the G chord. I'm going to play a D. The D chord. I'm going to play an A. E minor. I'm just going to play an E. For the C chord, I'm going to play the same E. And then I'm going to go to D for the G chord because that's in. It's in D. I'm just going to 
play a D on the D chord. As each chord changes, I'm just playing a note, I'm landing on a note that's in that respective chord, right? Now, I'm going to demonstrate what it would sound like. I'm going to demonstrate what it would sound like if I didn't play, um, if I didn't really pay attention to what was happening in the chords and I just played random notes from the scale. This is what it'd sound like, and it's not going to sound very good. So here we go. That's what you don't want to do. Um, you can you can tell a really really big difference. Okay. So. Again, there's a really big difference when you just play random notes from the scale and then you understand what's happening in the chords. Now, this takes a little bit of memorization, but I've given it to you in a really, like some small chunks. So we're just starting with a four chord progression. You can do this. I've, I've given you right here on the chart, um, you know, I've listed out for you the notes uh, for each chord. So there's three notes per chord, all right? And you can memorize this, okay? So you've got, um, this is the, the first, the third, and the fifth of, of the scale, all right? And um, well, <laughs> we could get into, you know, theory takes a little bit to, um, takes a while to explain. It's th music theory is not difficult. It just takes time to build it um, and to understand it. it, but it's not actually difficult. Like it's, it's really, really, really logical. In fact, uh, they, you know, whoever made music theory, I mean, it's evolved over who knows how many hundreds of years, but, uh, or more, I don't know, but, you know, music theory, they made it simple. It's, it's, it's logical. It's supposed to be as logical as possible. Um, it's just the logic of music, but, um, it does take time to to build and understand the theory, um, but it's not actually it's not actually difficult. Um, so, so you want to memorize what notes are happening, and then I've also given you a list of all the chords in the key of G, all the triads, I should say. So these are your triads in the key of G, and these are their respective, uh, you know, the notes that are in the key of G or in the in the chords. So like again, the G chord is G B D, and then it's got the A minor. And it's gonna be A C E, B minor is B D F sharp. So if you you know you can make up your own chord progressions and even use a full uh, G major scale um, or E minor scale. It's the same, uh, and you could actually use this guide to 
to uh, create more melodic solos using any chords in the key of G. And then um, you can always transfer all of this to another key. So anything on you know anything in music when it has to do with theory, it transfers to all the keys. And so I'm you know, playing the G scale. But let's say I wanted to play it in A. You just go up two frets, G, G sharp, A, and I can use the same shape. And I could play to a chord progression in the key of A and just do the exact same thing. Um, but you just want to know what's happening in the chords, okay? So again, download this PDF. It's going to be super helpful for you. First, you want to uh, memorize the scale. All right, then you want to memorize the notes in the scale, which are down here on the bottom, okay? Up here on the top, it gives you the, the correct fingering to use, if you need that. And then, uh, download the audio as well, okay? It's going to be in the email that you'll get. Uh, there'll be a link in the email that you'll get when you download this, where you can download the audio file that I was actually playing to, and it's going to be E minor, C, G, and D. And so you want to understand what's happening in those four chords. These are all the notes in those four chords. And because you'll have the notes in the scale pretty well memorized, you just try to land on a note that's in the chord as the chord changes. So when I go from E minor to C, when I get to the C, I want to play one of three notes, either a C, an E, or a G. And then I just improvise in between. So one thing you could do is you could actually map out what what notes you'll play for each chord as the chords change. And then you just kind of mess around in between. I'll show you, like this. See, I'll play this for E, for yeah, E minor. I'll play the same for C. I'll play D for G. And then I'm going to play A for the D chord. these four notes out. It could be any notes. And then I just mess around in between. That's how you do it. You can map out the four notes that you want to play. They can be they don't have to be what I was playing. It can be anything that's in happening in the chord. So map out those four notes and then just mess around with the scale in between. And that's that's all you have to do. So it's a it's a pretty simple trick. I mean, it's going to take you, you know, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour to uh, to do this. But I mean, split it up into a couple se sessions if you need to or whatever. Uh, but you can make it happen. You can do it, and it's going to help you a on. All right. So, um, hey, what's up, Josh? Awesome, man. Um, so, uh, anyway, leave me a comment and and let me know when you've done this. Okay. I want you to do this homework if you're struggling with your soloing. Let me know when you've done this and how it went for you. I'd love to hear your feedback. Just leave me a comment on this video, uh, on this post. And let me know um, what was easy for you and maybe what was difficult for you, okay? But um, again, use this. Go back and watch the video if you need to. It's not super long, um, but uh, you just want to make sure you, you do things in order to make it easier for yourself. So just really quick, I'm going to go over it really fast one more time. So download the PDF, okay? And then learn the scale. Memorize the scale first. Then memorize the notes in the scale. They're G, A, B, D, E, G, and it repeats. Okay. Then this is the progression you're playing in the audio, E minor, C, G, D. Here in the, uh, in the progression, it, this shows you what notes are happening in the chord. So an E minor chord has E, G, B, C has C, E, G, and so on. Map out. So you need to play, whenever the chord changes, you need to play one of these three notes in the chord as the chord changes, all right? 
starting with E minor. And then map out what, what four notes you're going to use, or what, what note you're going to use for each chord, what note you're going to use for each chord as it changes. Okay, map those out, and then just mess around in between. And your solos are going to sound way better. Um, it's awesome. So super simple, super actionable, and you can do this, okay? Um, let me know if you guys have questions. If you have, have any questions or if anything's confusing, I'm absolutely super happy to uh, answer any questions you have. I love that. So, um, so yeah, love you guys. Uh, hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope that your guitar practice goes awesomely this week, okay? Um, I shared a video on Tuesday, I believe it was. I think it was the last Facebook Live I did about um, my guitar practice time, and, and I think it'll be encouraging for you. So you can check that out, um, just different ways you can think about your practice time. So um, check that out as well. All right. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I always enjoy it. I actually never want to end these things. I could probably go on for an hour and just have a ton of fun. Um, but uh, I, I love teaching. That's It's just my passion. I just love it. Um, so uh, let me know if you guys have questions, all right? And I'm here for you. Okay, God bless you guys. Have a great week. And if you're playing at church on Sunday, have an awesome time worshiping the Lord and use these tricks to help you uh, have create better souls and express yourself more to the Lord. Uh, that's what this is all for. So uh, bless you guys. We will see you next Thursday at 5 o'clock. Don't forget to download your cheat sheet. See you next week. Bye.